What's up guys? This is Gene Jensen and uh, there is one tackle box that never ever leaves my boat. It goes from my boat to my kayak. I don't ever go fishing without it. And I want to show you what it is and what's inside it. All right, so the tackle box I'm talking about is my terminal tackle box. And what I want to do is I want to go through everything that's in it and show you guys the different things that I put in it and, and kind of talk about why uh, why it's that this way this is one of those things that has evolved over the years i used to have two separate boxes i used to have a box just for sinkers and swivels and things like that another box just for hooks and i had more hooks more different types of hooks and i realized i wasn't using half the crap in my box so i consolidated several years ago and this is what i've come up with so we're going to go from let's go from the upper left and just kind of work our way down and i'll talk about what's in it these are my mojo weights i pour these myself they're little cylindrical uh, weights made with a do-it um, uh, body lure mold uh, it's real soft lead so the, the holes close off but you just use the tip of a hook to open the holes back up and they're just fine several different sizes in there next one over are my uh, tungsten carolina rig weights that i uh that i guard with my life because true tungsten is no longer in business and they were the only ones that made them i think i have six left at home i only have three in there then I have my drop shot weights. I got the cylinder ones. I pour most of these myself with do-it molds. I've got the, it's hard to get these out. I got the bell sinker drop shot molds or hook or weights, sorry. And then I got a round one in there that I don't really use. I don't like those, but going on down, I got all my tungsten. Now you see how I got them marked. These are half ounce. These are seven sixteenths, three eighths uh five sixteenths quarter three sixteenths eighth and uh one sixteenth and then also in here and these are all these are all strike king tungsten except for a few of them and then what i've got in here is i've got uh bb's that's why there's rust in there because the bb's were rusty when i threw them in there but that's for making rattles with frogs and then i also have these little bitty uh what are they florida rig weights that you screw into the end and these are for uh, a certain swim bait a gambler swim bait that i throw all the time but yeah those are the sinkers except for these these are uh our worm head weights so when you're using the uh oh one of those japanese rigs i made a video of and i can't think of the name right now but anyway when you need anything when you need to put lead or uh, weight in the front in the head of a hook uh that's what i use and then i also have some uh, nail weights down in there then uh, here I've got some uh, some uh, water gremlin uh, pinch on bullet weights for uh, real quick like grass uh, mojo weight type deal. Uh, only if I really you know if I, if I'm lazy and I don't want to retie and totally tie on a mojo rig, I'll pinch those on real quick. These are all my swivels, both uh, snap swivels and uh, regular swivels. The ones I um, or no, these are swivels and, and split rings. These are the high dollar Spro uh, swivels that I use sometimes for inline spinners and things like that. And then uh, split rings, if I need to change out split rings and treble hooks. These are all my hitchhikers, my duo locks uh, for various things. I use hitchhikers to, uh, to change the action of flukes a lot and, and uh, keep baits on hooks. Then my swivels for my Carolina rigs and for my uh, uh, double fluke rigs and my flukes. Beads for Carolina rigs, uh, Carolina keepers. And then I get into my hooks. Uh, I mainly use Mustad grip pin hooks. They are absolutely, they're my favorite hook, always have been since they came out. They keep the bait on really well and they don't tear it up when you poke a hole through them. And uh, just a really nice, these are the EWGs. Then I've got the uh, offset round bends, the four aughts. I mainly use three and four, or yeah, three and four aught hooks with those. Um, these are um, three aught or uh, offset round bends. And then I've got these little tiny ones that I use for mojo rigging uh, in the grass. And they're straight shanked with a grip pin. And going on down here, this is just a little swivel that uh, I'd have to show you guys how to rig this. But this is something I picked up, just kind of an oddball thing at a show. I only have one left, but it adds flash and stuff to your soft plastics. Maybe I'll do a video about that one day, but I only have one left, so I've got to find them again. Uh, weighted wacky rig hooks. Uh, drop shot hooks and that's also wacky rig hooks but I'm out of them I ordered them on tackle warehouse then uh, these are trailer hooks for spinner baits 
and then I get into my treble hooks. These are uh, these are either one odd or number one trebles, uh, sixes, fours for my spin for my crankbaits when I got to trade them out. Then my weighted uh, my weighted swim bait hooks, my keel weighted hooks, and I've got several different types of their types in here, and I pulled them out. This is a Mustad one. I love these because these little weights right here, you can adjust them and slide them up and down the shank and change the fall rate and the action and everything of your of your swim bait. These are your solid ones with the grip pin uh, for like Kitek baits and things like that. Really good, and I like that the the weight's really skinny and tapered down, so when you put it in the in the uh, in the uh, swim bait, it doesn't tear it up too bad. This is a heavier one, and this right here is a Gambler one, and I use this for the big Gambler swim baits. Uh, that I throw down here in Florida and I usually just throw those in the box when I'm going to Florida. So you know only time I ever use them but I love them because they have very very little weight but they're a really big monstrous hook for those big swim baits. And I'm only fishing in like six inches of water sometimes. So these are pretty cool. I can't even remember the company that makes these. Uh, they, they actually came out with a different model without this little uh, pin in it right here. But uh, when you have when you put line on your rod and uh, you haven't tied a bait on, but you want to store your rod and keep the line running through the guides, you just clip this on the end of the end of the line and then reel it up to the to the uh, top of the rod, and it keeps you you know makes it to where it's real easy to store, and uh, and it just keeps you from uh, having to re you know run your line back through your eyes when you're ready to use that rod. Just kind of a cool little thing. Then we got my flipping hooks. These are uh, again must add grip pin heavy wire flipping hooks three and four aught. Then we got uh, all of my Ned rigs, just different sizes. Some are weedless, some aren't. Uh, mostly green pumpkin, black, and chartreuse. My wacky rig O rings, and then this is a really cool box. I've got my wacky rig tool right there. Oh, there's another one of those swivels. Look at that. All right, cool. So I got two of them. Then these I should only have one in here, but I've got three because I like to give them away. But uh, these are. Um, I don't know what they're calling them now, but they used to be called Trailer Hook Pals. Uh, they look a whole lot different now. I, the, the company at, uh, saw me at a show not too long ago and gave me the new ones, but I just haven't put the new ones in my box. But it, it, um, it basically, you put these little plastic, let me get it out. Take these little plastic discs, I don't know if you can see that, there we go, and uh, they fit right down in that little hole and then you use it to as a trailer hook keeper on your spinner baits. You just run it over top of it. Just this tool keeps you from uh, poking your finger with the with the hook when you put those on. Other things in here, punch stops, uh, wire clippers with a little bitty hook sharpener on there, which is just a good uh, hook sharpener. Uh, peg it pegging sticks, an extra tail for a uh, for a spro rat. And uh, oh there's a wacky hook. See? Finding all kinds of stuff when I go through here. But that's it. This is a uh, a Bass Mafia bait coffin. I've taken the sticker off of it, or the sticker fell off of it. It's so old. Yeah, it's a it's a really good stout box. It's perfect for this. And then the very at the top of the box, and look at the rust down here. And you can tell where I have lead. This is where all the this lead, all the dust from the lead comes from. But anyway, you take a uh, a shelf liner and you stick it in the top of this, and it keeps the crap from going from uh, one compartment to the other and getting bounced around and things like that. So. That's, that was a trick I came up with many, many years ago, and it still works today, and I put it in all my terminal tackle boxes. Just about all, any box where I don't want the stuff to go from one side to the other. That is my uh, my terminal box. It is, uh, like I said, it's something I don't leave home without. And when you guys are organizing your terminal tackle box, when you're doing, like, uh, doing something like that, take um, in account of what you've used over the last year and what you haven't used. And if you haven't used anything in, in, a, in a whole year in those boxes, take them out make room for something to, that you're going to use or something that you want to try out. Uh, it's one of the smartest things I ever did. It, uh, it just makes everything so much easier. It's better than carrying two different boxes. Like I said, one for hooks and one for sinkers and all that other crap. So uh, that's my terminal tackle box. That is, like I said, the most important box. But uh, like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out of the water, go out and catch some fish and have a great day.